everybody. This is Mystical Empress, Brenda Renee. I was just about to go out to do some psychic readings and life coaching this afternoon. And I wanted to take a minute to leave this little video and discuss some situations that I look at in my work, specifically with healing. Um, I had a client call, oh, about a year ago. And she was in such a desperate, depressed state, she was suicidal. Now, of course, I recommended her to get help immediately. And I got off the phone with her, and I was really concerned. And today she called, and at first I didn't recognize her. I knew I'd talked to her, but I talked to so many different people on the phone that I don't remember a lot of names. I end up getting into the session and then I realize who they are by their energy, by their story. And today we started talking and I, I realized who she was. And I said, are you the girl that called that was so depressed the last time? And she said, yes. And, you know, that's, like I said, it's been a year ago and she's still in that place. And I said, okay, we're going to do healing work on you today, spiritual healing shamanic spiritual healing where you go into meditation you journey you find what the situation is if there's a spiritual cause there's always a spiritual emotional cause behind everything so i said let's let's talk about this a little bit and i found out that she was a nurse and i may have known that the last time but i didn't remember and what i found with a lot of people that are in the healing profession, nurses in particular, often are very psychic themselves. And because they're so psychic, they tend to pick up everything. Now I asked her, I said, what kind of environment are you in right now working? Well, she had left a health clinic and now she's in a nursing home. So this girl, she's already on low reserves. Her battery's just barely there. And she's taken on all of this energy from sick people, from depressed people, from dying people. And when you don't know how to clear your aura and clean regularly, you know, you brush your hair every day, you brush your teeth every day, but you don't think to clean your aura. And over time, it's like a grimy junk just accumulates on it. And then you find yourself very susceptible to illness because your immune system drops and you find yourself um, even more open to depression. And this poor girl, I mean, I just wanted to do whatever I could to help her, to give her, you know, the pull to come back to a higher vibration. So I talked to her about, number one, learning how to clear her aura. And I'm going to send her some stuff tomorrow to help her because she lives in the rural south. She's not going to be able to find a lot of this stuff easily. So I told her that I was going to send her a black tourmaline. Now, I, I have a piece for myself that's rough, but I've got some tumbled versions for my clients because I run into so many empathic people like her. And I said, okay, I'm going to send you black tourmaline because this stone acts like a psychic vacuum cleaner. It sucks all this junk off of you. And I touch mine, I hold mine periodically throughout the day because client after client after client, I'm listening to people. And typically, they don't come to me when they're happy and light and everything's perfect in their world. They come to me when they have problems. So I have to protect my energy too. So I'm going to send her some black tourmaline. The other thing that I'm going to send her, I have a background in horticulture. And so plants and herbs, flowers, their healing potential is very close to my heart. So I made her up an aromatherapy blend in this little roll-on bottle. So she can put it on like perfume. And... I specifically focused in on grounding, aura clearing, drawing in higher vibrational beings like angels and archangels, and clearing her mind and the depression. So I'm going to send all this to her tomorrow. 
Meanwhile, what I did was I went in and looked. I go up to source, to God. I have power animals and all these things, but I start at the top and then I bring in my helpers to help me see what's going on. Because when you work from the top, you don't have to worry about filtering through because none of these beings are perfect. And so you go to the perfection. So I go up to God and I ask to see this girl's aura and see what's going on. Now I already had an idea that she probably had entity attachments. And that, you know, some psychics make it sound like it's, ooh, it's so mystical that you have this. It's common. It's just like dogs getting fleas. If you don't clean your aura, if you go through trauma, if you've had, like her, long-term depression, now I can't tell you which one comes first. Sometimes it's the entity attachment, sometimes it's the, the depression. But what happens is your aura the shell around you weakens and whenever it weakens there's little holes and tears and these entities see that and they're like woohoo let me pull in here and plug in to this energy source so then it makes it almost just feel like you're in quicksand trying to pull yourself out when they're constantly draining you so i had the suspicion because like I said, she's been in depression so long, I knew that this kind of junk was probably attached to her. Now, I'm not going to say that was the core issue that's going on with her, but it helps to clean this stuff off and start with a fresh slate. Now, so I go into this meditation and I ask to see her aura, see what's going on. And I immediately see these black, kind of like blobs, not demons or anything like that, even though that's possible. But with her, I just saw black blobs. So they're like dark thought forms, energy forms that just kind of coalesce around weakened energy. And I, I asked healing energy from divine, from her angels to come in. Well, I kind of thought I would see them brushing the stuff off like I usually do. But instead, what I saw was, I saw a spiral of golden light. First, it was all white above her head, just really bright light, which I knew was divine. Then that gold, almost like a vortex or tornado shape, just went all the way down her body. And then Mother Mary showed up. And I'm talking to her as I'm going through this so she doesn't feel, feel left out. And so that she knows what's going on. Because giving the client a visual, especially on the phone doing remote healing work, it's important so they, it makes it more real to them when they see what you see. And I'm a very visual person. And most of the work I do, I give people metaphors, visual metaphors to understand what I'm talking about. So I'm going through this and I'm telling her what I'm seeing. Then Mother Mary shows up. And Mother Mary's bringing her this unconditional, supportive love, nurturing, motherly love. And then as I was wrapping up, I said, okay, what, what kind of tools can she take with her after this is done because I tell people I can clear you all day long but if you don't do the mental work when you leave me it's just gonna come back so it's like you come to me I clear it and then you need to do your mental homework and her homework Jesus the Christ showed up and his well let me say how he showed up it was it's always creative in these things you don't really know what you're gonna get. So I, when I asked for, you know, what, what is she going to do after we're done with this time? And I saw this crown, a crown come down. Now it wasn't a mystical empress crown with gold and all of that. It was a crown of thorns. And as a Christian, I know that's a crown referring to Jesus. So then I said, okay. I told her, I said, Jesus is here. And he's wanting you to develop a personal relationship with him. And I 
reaffirm to her, I'm not talking about church. I'm not, ta I'm not, this isn't like I'm preaching at you. This is the energy you need to be working with. Jesus was a supreme divine healer. He was an ascended master. He knew the laws of this plane and how to work with them. And he offered those teachings to us. So I told her, I said, you know, instead of seeing him up there in front of the church, you know, on the cross or in a portrait, see him as a friend that you can sit down and talk to or you can walk through the garden and talk to. So I asked her, I said, just in your meditations, your prayer work, see yourself with him and lay down all this junk that you're so upset about and depressed about at his feet and let him help you heal it. So out of that healing work, after I pulled Mar Mother Mary in, Jesus in, then and after the entity junk was all cleared away, you know, she's fresh and sparkly. So I looked to see where um, these problems were originating with her. And it was right around her shoulders is where it was all kind of um, sitting. Now this girl's a Capricorn, okay? Capricorns and Scorpios and any of that moon, rising, or sun. It can be any three of those. These people come in with heavy life lessons to learn. And they do so because they want to fully embrace and own their power. And they know coming in that if they have a life where everything's handed to them, you know, in a feathered nest, they're not going to learn their power. But the problem with Capricorn is sometimes it can be so heavy, the lessons, that the person just breaks. And she's at that point. Also, she's in her Saturn return. She's 28, about to be 29 years old in January. So the Saturn return is difficult for all of us. But for a Capricorn, it's even more significant because the Saturn returns. Saturn is the planet of Capricorn. So it's really heavy business. And, you know, she was so upset. She went back. She's a nurse, but she went back to school. And she said, I don't have the energy to even take the classes. And I'm trying to, I feel like a failure. And I said, look, I understand this depth of depression you're in. I was in it between 2007 and 2012. I thought about killing myself all the time. I would wake up in the morning and I'd be too scared to get out of the bed. And I went through that and I finally pulled my way out of it and I said, you will too. And what you learn from this dark night of the soul, you will go on to teach other people. So, I explained to her that this is a very important time in her life for making major decisions and the paths she takes will set the tone for many years in her adult life. So she's in this healing profession which apparently she's, she's chosen the right field for herself because she has no uh, indecision about staying with it and she would at this point if she was on the wrong path. But right now, it's almost like a doubling down. After the Saturn return, we're more um, in this dimension. Let me see how I can explain this. 3D is very, very dense. And right now, it's even more dense than it's ever been. The energy is extremely intense. And when you're depressed like this, it's harder to get out. It's like having boulders stacked on top of you. So here she is in this Saturn return and she's feeling this pressure to decide her life, make serious decisions and move forward. After the Saturn return, if you don't believe me, you can look at pictures of people. Look at pictures of someone, say 27, 28, 
Then look at their pictures when they turn 30, 31, 32. There's a marked difference. And they look more serious. There's still this youthful um, innocence, naivety in their aura when they're, when they're in their 20s. But the minute you cross that threshold, it's like you become denser in form. Okay? So anyway, we got through with the healing work. I told her I was going to send her these goodies. And I asked her, okay, we've got homework. We're going to meditate, pray, and you can go to church if you like. You can do like I do. I go in the Catholic church when there's no one there because it's always open. And I sit in the pews and I pray and I connect to divine. Whatever works for you. But make sure you have a daily conversation with Jesus and talk to him and feel his support. Next, I asked her to write a daily gratitude list or appreciation list. And I said, some days you may not be able to find anything you feel grateful for. And if it gets to that, be grateful that you're breathing, that you're able to write, that you're not paralyzed, something. You know, whatever you can come up with, come up with it when you're in that really low place. And then as your vibration shifts, you will realize all the other things you have to be grateful for. And then you'll pull those in. But right now, we got to take baby steps, okay? So she's got her homework. We're going to stay in contact so I can see how she's progressing. But I just, like I said, before I went out to do these other life coachings and readings and things, I wanted to sit down while this was fresh on my mind to do this video because I am quite certain there's a lot of people out there that feel this way. And just know that getting, getting yourself cleared and getting grounded will make a lot of difference in reclaiming your well-being and balance. You know, I told her, I said, there's, you know, I said, you're a healer at heart, so you've probably naturally been the healer of the family, of your relationships, not only with just work. And years of that adds up. So she's got a fresh start today. And we're going to move forward and see how she does. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.